Hi folks, good evening. I thought I would do a video this evening detailing something that I've not ever really been able to find a lot of information on without a lot of digging on the internet and there's no videos to be found on this subject. So I took it upon myself to sh show you how to do something this evening. What we're working on is a 1994 Chevy Caprice with a 5.7 liter LT1 engine. Uh, of course, the engine's found in Caprice, Impala Supersport, uh, Buick Roadmaster, Cadillac Fleetwood, um, uh, Caprice Station Wagon, Buick Roadmaster Estate Wagon, and mostly in these cars, these B-body cars and D-bodies from the years 94 to 96. And in the Caprice, there's also a version that's much more common in these that's called a L99 4.3 liter V8. And that's essentially the same engine just with a smaller cubic inch displacement. So everything I say in this video will also apply to the 4.3 liter engines found in the Caprice. Uh, this will also apply to uh, LT1 engines found in the Camaro and the Firebird. Um, with possibly a couple of differences which I will point out. Now what we're doing is we're working on the cooling system in this car. This car has 259,000 miles on it. Uh, has unknown history, uh, unknown maintenance history and it appeared to have uh, little or no actual cooling in it. It had just looks like plain water, rusty water. So I'm in the middle of flushing the system out and I've never had one of these LT1 engines till now. I'm pretty familiar with them, but I've never actually had one in my possession to be able to show and make a video. So uh, I'll tell you what you need to know on these. Now this engine is basically, like I said, it's a, it's a 350 LT1, but it does have some significant differences in the cooling system as opposed to the older 350s and 305s and 327s and things like that so if you're like me and you never had one of these and you're coming into working on one or you or whatever the case may be uh, I'll show you some things here you need to know first of all this engine uh, we're missing we have a coolant recovery tank here expansion tank is miss I have this off to clean it uh, but that's not related to what we're going to talk about at this point. Um, this engine looks pretty similar to an older, like a, a tune port injected engine, uh, or maybe a Vortec is found in trucks and things like that. But this specific engine, this LT1 and the L99 4.3, have what's known as a reverse flow cooling system. Um, Essentially that means that the path of the coolant from the radiator through the engine and back to the radiator uh, is reversed from the way it flowed in earlier days. Um, the earlier engines used, uh, they would draw cooled antifreeze coolant from the bottom of the radiator up to the water pump and then through the block and then up through the heads last and intake and then out back to the radiator to be cooled again. Okay, well on these engines this reverse cooling system for reverse flow means that it takes cooled coolant from the bottom of the radiator comes up and this here I have this detached and I'll try to let me position my light up here maybe we'll see something a little more clear this is detached of course I have this apart to take the thermostat this is the thermostat housing this piece you see here and the second part this is actually the top of the water pump on these engines this engine has a gear driven water pump uh, it has a what's kind of a shaft driven water pump comes directly off the front of the engine it has no belt running it um, that's a good thing because in an event that you threw a serpentine belt you would not overheat the engine uh, but what's interesting about this you notice that it also has the other radiator hose coming in from the top of the top hose of the radiator similar to the older engines but they both 
end up at the same spot and what happens is like I said it draws cooled engine coolant into the top of the engine it flows down and through the heads first and then to the engine block and then it comes back around and it comes back out that's actually a two-way thermostat um, and then back to the radiator to be cooled again. I'm not going to get much into that theory except that uh, what this the significance of this is is there is no provision other than what I will show you here in a minute to drain the coolant out of this engine even if you uh, drain the radiator via the lower hose which I did or the coolant petcock on the other side of the radiator at the bottom it'll drain out about a gallon a little bit less than a gallon but it's just what's going to be in the radiator and what's in this hose you'll see this bottom hose here it's kind of kind of dark in there and a lot of stuff going on here to block it but that's it just ends up at the radiator but you see it comes up to the top so you're not going to drain the engine that way um, so what are you going to do if you want to get the couple gallons or so of coolant or water or whatever is actually in here out of this engine. Now some people say just a, uh, do a, a, a repeat of this drain the radiator several times, fill it up with water, let it run, drain it, fill it up with water, drain it, you know, and it'll get it all flushed out. But I don't think that's, that, I think that's taking a shortcut that's not really going to do much good. So, what you have to do on these is, on this engine, and most of them, there's a device on bolted into the, screwed into the side of the engine block on the bottom side of it, I'll just show you here in just shortly, called a knock sensor. Uh, that's these here. These are knock sensors. Um, this engine, particular engine application happens to have two of them. Some engines only have one, some will have two. Uh, once you find one, you look on the opposite side of the block, and you see if you either have another knock sensor or you have a, just a drain. It'll be just like a, uh, it just looks like the top of a bolt sticking out of the block. And that's really the only way you're going to actually drain the engine block on these is remove these dudes, which I've done, and uh, just let it drain. And then once you get it drained out, you can run your hose into the top here with those things still out and let it flush water through the block let it run you know several minutes or whatever and that should do a good job of flushing it and these things what I use to get these out with it's a 22 millimeter socket as you see here and that's the hex part of it right there you want to be careful that's plastic right there that part that nipples sticking out so you really don't want to be trying to, uh, you know, yank down on your on your socket. You need to have a good grip on it and keep it level. Now I had to use an extension and a swivel joint on this car because the frame bracing prevented me from getting just a clean shot in with the straight extension here. And I actually had to use my, I have a old jack handle that's is in two pieces that I used for a breaker bar and I had to actually use that. And these things are, they're a tapered thread, so when you go to put them back in, so it's got a little bit of sealer on it. You probably want to clean them up and put maybe a little bit dab more sealer. But they're a tapered thread, so once it starts getting tight, you know, you don't have to just crank the hell out of them. Once they snug up, that's that's it. They're snug. You can just leave them alone because uh, you may have to do this on a regular basis, taking these things out. But Let's go underneath this thing. It's been draining for about a half hour, and I think it's all empty now now these things there's two of these and you need to take both both of them out you don't need to just take one out and think you got all of it because that's how much fluid came out of both sides uh, this thing is pretty much the system is kind of split from side to side on this engine block so uh, taking just one out and calling it good that ain't gonna work you're gonna have to take them both out sorry to be the bearer of bad news but that's that's just how it is <sighs> Now I'm going to carefully slide this jug of, looks like water. I think that's about all in it, water and rust back there. <laughs> well, fun, fun. And let's show you where we're at under here. Now we're just under the front of the engine. 
You can see I have taken my hose off there. And we're gonna go back under the, <clears throat> excuse me, cross member. And here's our bottom of our oil pan. There's your oil filter transmission. So that's this will orient you about where you're at. And this is looking up on the driver's side of the engine. Okay, now if you look right up in there, see that little threaded boss? That's where the, one of those knock sensors was. Still got a little drip coming out. See how nasty that cooling is? Alright, now on the other side. It's still drifting. There's the one on this side. This is the passenger side. There's your starter. And I had my battery disconnected to do this. I'd re kind of recommend that anytime you're working with tools underneath by this starter, you know, you could lose control of one and kind of it could take off and get on your battery cable over there and kind of cause a little fireworks show. You don't want that. But anyway. So yeah, guy, that's uh, that's basically it. It's not a hard thing to do. You just got to muscle those things out. And like I said, I'm gonna get my hose and get the my piece of carpet out from under there that I lay on and everything, so I can just let water run out the door of my shop here. And I'm just gonna let this thing run water through it for about 30 minutes to flush it out. So, cause I've uh, it's got a lot of rust and junk in it so anyway I hope this video has kind of explained this procedure uh, like I said just to recap very quickly um, you're just not sorry about that you're just not gonna be able to really drain one of these without doing this because there's just that's that's the there is no low point in the block up here that hose is attached to. There just isn't one. They, they all go up here. It's kind of strange, but that's the way it is. So, uh, anyway, uh, so just, like I said, just take pull your two things out. Just be sure you don't have lights or your face or anything underneath these when you're uh, doing this work. Because once they start getting loose, you can thread them out with your hands. And another thing, as always, you'll see I've taken precautions, especially on a car like this. It's a heavy car. Please always, when you're working under a vehicle like this, be sure to support it adequately with ramps and a jack and jack stands because you do not want to be trapped under a car like this or a truck. So, um, and this procedure will also apply to really any engine that has an, any kind of drain plug. I mean, that's the recommended way to drain an engine thoroughly. A lot of people don't do that because it's a hassle. And you kind of worry, well, I might snap something off and ruin the engine. But that's not really likely. Um, not unless you just work. You know, if you're up north and the bottom of your engine block looks like it's got stuff on it from like the Titanic, uh, you might just not want to fool with it but this one was down here from the south and it was clean just greasy so everything just came right out easily so that's it i guess um hope you enjoyed the video uh, i'll probably be doing another series of videos on um some more coolant work and other things that i'm going to get into with this car so please stay tuned and feel free to comment and ask questions if you need to if you got any questions i'll be glad to ask answer them for you uh, at any time so uh, thank you for viewing please comment and rate and subscribe talk to you later